Welcome to Menu Monday. New recipes every Monday. Stuck in that cooking rut? I've been there. Come join me and try some new things. I have fun in the kitchen and I hope you enjoy the video. So let's get cooking! So the first thing we do for our wraps is to rinse the lettuce and then uh, dry them out. So what I'm doing here is taking the leaves, rinsing them and putting them on a baking, like a, a baking, oh what do you call those things? Well you put the, pot, the cake to cool off, the cooling tray. Ah, get there eventually. And then with the lettuce, once it got too small, I just cut it up and turned it into lettuce and put it in with my other spring mix in the refrigerator so as not to waste it. So here's the lettuce leaves drying out. And in the skillet, we're going to put one pound of hamburger. And we're going to cook and stir the beef until it's brown and crumbly. It takes about five to seven minutes. These are all the ingredients we're then going to put into the skillet with the hamburger. I'll have all the ingredients listed at the end with the exact measurements. Once the hamburger is cooked, we're going to drain off all the grease. Next, we're going to cook the onion. Now this calls for one onion chopped. However, I had a bag of onion left over in the refrigerator from a previous meal and I just wanted to finish that up. So it wasn't quite a full onion, um, but it did the job. And you're going to uh, cook this until the onion is tender, about five minutes. And now we're going to add all the other ingredients. Be sure to drain your water chestnuts before you put them in. And then I just mix this all up and then we're going to add the meat and get that combined. And then you'll just let this simmer after it's all incorporated for about two minutes and then it's ready to go. Now I'm also making some uh, steamed broccoli and cauliflower to go along with this. And I'm going to do these in the instant pot. So I just put a cup of water in and then the uh, basket and just these are frozen vegetables so a little of each. You can do any side. You don't even have to have a side if you're doing these for lunch. They're quite filling. I'm going to set that for three minutes. And then it was ready and time to dish up our plate. put some spray butter and pepper on the vegetables and I got my lettuce leaves and put the meat on top. It was really really good. We'll definitely be making it again and I'll put all your ingredients again at the end with the measurements. I hope you give it a try. It's very flavorful.
Today Big Daddy's putting a Boston bug on the outside grill. He uses a Pit Boss pulled pork rub, which we love. We use it on all sorts of pork, pork chops, um, pork roast, Boston bug. It's got a great flavor, so if you see it, give it a try. I think you'll enjoy it too. But he rubs that in all around the roast and then wraps the roast in the foil. And now out to the grill. He's got this on low and we cook it low and slow. I think it took about three to four hours if I'm not mistaken, but just check your temperature, make sure it's done. Now we sliced it up the first night and had it with some grilled cauliflower and broccoli. Unfortunately, I did not get a picture of a plate, so I do apologize for that. Um, this he is slicing the first few pieces for his dad and taking it over to him. But it was delicious and there was so much left over what we did, uh, Big Daddy cut it up into small chunks and I use it later in the week with a, to make another recipe and that will be coming up on this week's video. So this was, the, we had, I told you it was a lot of leftovers. <laughs> and here are your ingredients. So for tonight's dinner, we're going to mix the rotel and the soup. And we're going to add a half to a full pack of taco seasoning. I purchased one of these um, like cans of seasoning. So it's two tablespoons is equivalent to a full package. So that's what I did. Get that all combined. All right, now you want to shred your uh, rotisserie chicken, and I usually do this by hand, but I had heard that doing it with the blender or mixer is pretty good, breaks it up, and it worked out good. So I may do that again. It's a, it, it's a little finer than doing it by hand, so it depends on the, how you want your texture of your shredded chicken. But this worked out really well for this recipe. So we add that to the soup and tomato mixture, and then we're going to put in two to three handfuls of shredded cheddar. Right, get all that mixed up and then we're going to spray our baking dish. Put the mixture in. Now, I used to top these with Ritz crackers and butter, but since we're doing low carb, I just take three tablespoons of uh, breadcrumbs and some melted butter and just sprinkle that on top just to give it a little bit of a crunch and that's much more low carb. I'm going to cook this at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes or until browned. Mm -hmm. 
On the side, we're going to do some Mexican roasted zucchini. So the first thing we do is dice up the zucchini and put it in a bowl. We're going to add olive oil, chili powder, garlic powder. It called for cayenne pepper, but I didn't have any. It's on my grocery list. And then some salt and pepper. I mix all this up. We'll take our baking sheet, put some parchment paper on that. I'll spread the zucchini on there and we're going to roast that for 25 minutes at 425 degrees or until done. And here is dinner tonight. Both were delicious. We'll definitely be putting it back on the menu. Here are your ingredients. Today we're going to use up the rest of the pork and we're going to do a slow cooker meal because we have a day planned with our grandson. So uh, put this in the slow cooker for four hours on low because my pork was already cooked. So if your pork is not cooked, you can do this, but you want to do either four hours on high or eight hours on low. First thing you do is put uh, half the onions in the bottom of the casserole dish. And these are sliced. Now we're going to add two cloves of garlic. I use garlic, so I put that in, and then you're going to add a bay leaf and some pepper. Now we're going to arrange the pork in a single layer on top of the onions. Now this is where I kind of messed up a little bit. You're supposed to put the other layer of onions on top before you add the vinegar and the soy sauce and sugar, but it still tasted delicious. So if you mess up too, no problem because those onions went down into the liquid and got seasoned anyway. Now we're gonna get the rest of the onion on top. I think I only used half. It seemed like an awful lot of onions. Uh, it called for two, but I used half of the second onion and saved the rest. Put a little more pepper on top and put that in the slow cooker and off we went. Now when we came home it was cooked and ready so I decided to have some carrots and some turnip root. So I peeled the carrots. Our neighbors have a huge garden. They grow everything uh, themselves. And she found out my new favorite vegetable was turnip root. And she came over with a whole bunch of them the other day. It was so nice of her. So we've been enjoying those. And I just cut these into wedges.
and got the carrots cut up into sort of uh, french fry sized pieces just so they cook as about approximately the same time as the uh, turnip root. So I put in some olive oil, some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder and do that to taste. And then I put these in the oven 400 degrees for 20 minutes. They were awesome. And that was dinner tonight. And here are your ingredients. For this recipe, the first thing you need to do is cook your hamburger. So we get that going on the stove. While that's cooking, we're going to cut up our green pepper. And this is cut into bite-sized pieces. Alright, once we've got it all washed, we're going to cut it up. And take our, our cream cheese and soften that in the microwave. I did uh, one minute it was perfect consistency. We're going to take our frozen green beans and place them in the bottom of the casserole dish. I did spray it first. I'm going to put the peppers on top of the green beans. Sorry, there goes my ice baker. We're draining now the hamburger. Get all the grease off of that. Put that in a bowl and mix in the Arju gravy mix. Don't add the water, just the powder. And then you put in the cream cheese and get that all incorporated. Now I'll put some salt and pepper in the casserole dish. Do that to taste. We're going to add the meat. And you can cook this either for two hours on high or four hours on low. And you want to add your um, slices of cheese uh, five to ten minutes prior to the end of the cooking time. And that's just enough time to melt that. Alright, and to go along with that, I did some carrots and some mashed or ranch cauliflower. And I wanted to cook it all together in the instant pot, so I used two baskets. You can combine it all in one if you just have one and just separate them when they come out. I cut the cauliflower into florets so that it would cook faster. Um, the carrots take six minutes, and six minutes is good for the cauliflower too. Okay, 
I'm just going to peel up these carrots and cut them down and we'll get them in our second basket. I have put one cup of chicken broth in the bottom of the Instant Pot. Alright, set for six minutes and I did a quick release. We're going to empty the liquid out of the Instant Pot, put the cauliflower in there. We're going to add our butter and our ranch dressing mix and just slightly mash it. I make this quite often. It's really very tasty. And that was dinner tonight. Very good. Definitely going back on the menu. Here are your ingredients. Hope you enjoyed this week's menu and if you're new to the channel I welcome you please consider subscribing I'd love to have you and for those viewers that are coming back welcome back I hope you enjoyed it too I'll be back soon with another video take care y'all love you bye bye